So we're going to begin with an algebra review. One of the most important things to know about calculus is that it's not calculus that's actually difficult. It's the algebra behind the calculus that's difficult. So what I did was created a review that uses the meat of the algebra that you should have learned truly in an intermediate algebra class. Now, a lot of this is not covered in a college algebra class. A little bit is, but the real meat of the algebra you're going to use is from an intermediate algebra class. You need to know the following skills to be successful in a calculus class. So if you are not comfortable with the skills in this algebra review, I can guarantee you that you are not ready for this course, for a calculus course, and you are not ready, you are not going to be able to succeed unless you do a great deal of studying and prepping yourself, getting ready for this. So this is all prerequisite material. It should all be a review. And again, all of this is going to be used in depth over and over throughout the entire semester. So please gauge yourself, decide, is this the right class for you when you go through this algebra review? Do you need to brush up and retake algebra, or are you ready to go? And I hope you are, and that's why I created this packet. So that's what this first note says. It says the majority of errors for Math 212 and Math 220 for our introductory calculus course is the algebra steps, not the calculus. So it says the purpose of this review is to determine if you have the basic algebra skills necessary to succeed in Math 212. So the first thing I want to know is, do you know interval notation? Because we're going to be writing increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, intervals of continuity. Several of our answers are going to be using interval notation. So I need to know that you at least understand interval notation. So what's the idea? Well, you can see it on a number line. On a number line, you can use parentheses. There's two different things I'm seeing here. I see parentheses, and then I see a distinguished difference between brackets. Okay. So what's the difference between parentheses and brackets? Parentheses means you cannot be that actual number. So for instance, if we scoot over and we look at this, it says negative two to one in parentheses. That is not an ordered pair. That is not a point on a graph. We are giving an answer as an interval notation saying it can be any number between negative two and one, but not including negative two and not including one. So for instance, it could be 0 0.9999999999, but it cannot be one. Okay, so that's what parentheses mean. Any numbers between these two values, negative two and one, but not including them. So again, on a graph, you would draw a number line and draw it with parentheses. Versus the next one, which is closed brackets, not parentheses, those are called brackets, negative one to two, that means I can plug in the number negative one and I can be the number two. So I can actually plug in those values. So the difference between parentheses and brackets, parentheses, you cannot be that number, Brackets, you can be that number. And you don't have to have both parentheses or both brackets. You could have, for instance, on this next one, it says one half to three. One is a parentheses and one is a bracket. Likewise, it could go the other one. You have a bracket negative one half comma three. So um, those are what they look like on the number lines. Again, parentheses cannot be the number. Brackets, you can be the number. Well, sometimes we're going to have intervals that go all the way to infinity. So if you see a comma infinity, that really means anything bigger than a. That's really what that means right there. So if you see two to infinity in parentheses, uh, you put a parentheses on two and you just color the number line or shade the number line to the right of that number two. Okay, um, that's any number greater than but not equal to two. I do want to note that if you notice, any time you see an infinity symbol, Anytime you see an infinity symbol, you are going to see it with parentheses because you can never equal the number infinity. Infinity is a never ending concept. You can never actually include the number infinity. So whether it's infinity or negative infinity, like you see a couple examples later, it will always be in parentheses. Okay. So let's look at another one. If you have any number bigger than or equal to uh, negative one. So, so let me write this down for you. This would be an example of X is greater than or equal to negative one. This one would be an X is greater than two. So anytime you see just greater than, um, you don't include the number, that's parentheses. Anytime you see a greater than or equal to, that's a bracket, you do include the number. Okay, so this would be an ex excellent example of X is less than one. Um, the next example, because that's anything to the left of one, anything less than one. We don't include the number one, so that would be using parentheses. This next one's a great example of x is less than or equal to negative one half. 
So make sure you know your inequality symbols, that you can graph these on a number line, and that you can write them properly in interval notation. Brackets include, parentheses do not. So let's see it in action, okay? Let's look at these notes right here. It says we use parentheses um, when we do not include the point. So again, let me highlight this for you. Parentheses are when you do not include it, and you use brackets when you do include it. Okay, and here's a really, really important note for you. Always go from left to right, or smallest, which is most negative, to largest. But you always want to go from left to right when you're writing intervals. You can never do something like 5, 3, because 3 is smaller than 5. And then you separate the numbers with commas. So let's look at this next one right here. I always start these when I have an inequality. I start them by drawing a number line. I mark down the number that they're talking about. Here's the number negative two. And then I want you to remember, as long as X is on the left, when you look at the inequality, it points the direction you need to shade. So as long as X is on the left, this is always true. Since X is on the left, it is X is less than negative two is how you would read that. But the inequality points the direction that you would shade. So we would shade to the left of it. Notice it's not equal. And since it's not equal, we cannot be that number, so we would use a parentheses. You might see another version of this in other textbooks, just to let you know, where you have the number negative 2. You might see it shaded to the left, and then they might use an open circle versus a closed circle. So open circles represent parentheses, closed circles represent brackets. Uh, here we'll just use parentheses to keep it consistent. Okay. So what is our answer for this? Well, let's think about this. How far left does this go to how far right does it go? Well, it goes all the way left, and we have to go left first. It goes all the way left to negative infinity. And since it's negative infinity, it's an infinity, I have to use a parentheses. And then how far right does it go? It goes all the way right to the number negative 2. Then I have to use a parentheses because I cannot include that number. That would be my answer on this one. X is less than negative 2. That's, I've drawn it on the number line, and I've written my answer using interval notation.